in this video, we will create together a small database using only SPSS, a statistical package for social stories. I won't use any substitute of SPSS, and I will just use the original system from IBM, the version 29 that was launched last year. So let's do it. Let's do it together and create a database for SPSS. How you can get the SPSS database, I will put you the link. You can download a free trial for one month or purchase if it's something that you will use for a longer time. If not, if it's for practice, you just can download the free trial like I have here. I'm showing you at this and this moment and I click on try SPSS statistics for free and this is how I got this time okay once you download your system you will open a new data set new data set and then that's the way you can obtain uh, data I'm gonna click on data and that's how you can obtain this empty la empty screen that looks exactly as excel right looks similar to excel but it has some features that allows you to analyze in the data and be more effective with the statistics okay so let's do it here and now the icon will look like this okay okay so the first step i will do to create this file oh my god now okay let's do it again i don't want to use this file i want to use a clean one that's what i open new data set i will go to uh, data view variable view and in variable view I will add the first name of my first question. Remember at this time I have a questionnaire in paper that I, that I already create and my population, my sample completed, right? And that's how I will start to um, upload my matrix, my data set. Remember every time you are coding, it's very important that you add a number to every a survey is a case so i'm working with the case number one at this moment okay so very important to understand that and to add the number oh my god here to add the number to your case case one i put number one in my first case which is a survey here in the first variable view remember to click here in this um tab variable view and the first thing i will write this survey say gender so i will write gender okay and i will move with tab and then if all of this data will appear i just in decimal gonna write zero i will just type zero and here in label is the answer you will uh, the question sorry so here i will write the question i asked to my sample in the values column values i'm gonna click these three dots and i'm gonna click the plus sign and in this left column i will write one and, and then i click on the next uh, one that say label and the first label will be female on this case Okay, and I'm gonna hit on plus sign, and then I'm gonna write two. Why one and two? Because every single answer, remember that you have from your population, from your sample, it's gonna become a, a, a code, a number. Now we are coding, as and you can see, I have my value labels will be male and female because those are the answers I got from my survey. Okay, number one will be, um will be age that's the second question i'm asking to my population here age and then when i click tab i hit on tab you will see it's gonna say 
right, numeric. These variables are numeric, so I will leave it numeric. I will use a string when there is open question. Open question, I will use a string. And in this case, I will put zero. And in this case, I will say the same answer that I asked to my population is H. So I just I'm gonna type H. But in my values here in this survey, I put that less than 25 is a code. I hit the plus sign, hit plus sign. And then the number one will be the label for this one will be less than 25. Less than 25. Okay, I hit on plus, and then number two will be, and I hit on the next, put number two, and then in the next square, I will write 26 and until 35. That's the answer I, uh, on the second option, right? I click on the plus because I have a third option here, third value label. And the third value label for this question is 36 to 45, 36 to 45. So I hit, I write that, I just type it. And then I click on the plus sign again. And then in the number four, my next column will say 46 to 55, 46 to 55. Plus again, and then number five will be in the second square. I'm going to write 55 plus because that's exactly what my survey say. Okay, I'm just transcribing the instrument that we create to develop this survey, this study, this research study. Okay, so here in the rest of the columns, I'm not doing anything. I will leave it ordinal. All the variables will be ordinal for now. And every single thing like this is okay. It, it's actually no, no problem with this part. A, it's aligned. All of this is format, so we are okay on that. Let's go to with the number three, with the number three, which is actual weight. I'm using this variable here because I want that you have the, oh my God. Stay on the call. That's why I always have a situation with this system. Okay. Now, uh -huh. sorry, I'm trying to come back to SPSS because every time you're recording, it's hard to record and teach you something at the same time. Okay, let's go with the number three here is actual weight. Okay, actual weight. This is variables for practice. This is a service for practice. So it's not, uh, we are not dedicating so much time at the structure of this question because we already created and we did it for practice, as I say. So don't worry too much for this part on the survey because the most important now is that we practice the data set in SPSS. Actual way is gonna be is actual way. That's it. And we didn't ask different. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna write this exactly how I asked to my population. And then the values uh, will be. I hit on the plus sign, and then um, the number one will be my first answer in this survey is less than 120 pounds. Less. 120 pounds. This is the first answer that I asked in this survey. Two was um, the first value label, right? So the second value is 2121 uh, until 30, until 150 pounds. I do these variables in purpose. I create these values in purpose because I want that this um, practice allow you to create the T test student um, T test student. And these kind of questions are very good for uh, try the T test student uh, 180. Okay. 
the t test right so i hit on plus and then but we're gonna run everything also frequency and descriptive okay let's go with the number four and the number four was for this solving one a one um two one thing one zero and i'm gonna hit the plus sign and i'm gonna stop until now here i'm just gonna put in the number five i'm gonna do 210 and plus because i don't want to make the video too long and that you take too much time in this practice so let's look at until here okay let's leave it until here and you are good to go we are making sure we're still recording yes we are okay so let's go with the variable the next variable is gonna be desire weight desire weight i'm gonna just call it like that and i'm gonna leave it numeric and i'm gonna hit zero here i'm gonna just type zero and then i'm gonna type desire weight remember this is the question that we add to the population. And the values for this one will be the same values that we already use in the uh, last question, will be one, and then the label will be less, less than one, two, zero. I hit on plus sign, then the number two, then number two will be, um, one to one until one five zero okay i hit on plus number three will be number three will be one five one ah uh, sorry 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 here in the next square one five one until one a zero and then next one will be four i did like the last question was one a one until two one zero and then i use it plus again and then i'm gonna call the number five and i stop it here i stop it here two one zero plus okay so just to leave it like that, and then we keep working from there. I'm do, I'm good with the rest. I'm gonna leave all my variables ordinal. Mm, I say ordinal, yeah, ordinal. Mm, actually, nominal. Ordinal is okay here, and ordinal is okay here. Uh, when I say no ordinal is variables with order, one, two, three, four, five, when like when we are counting, liquor scale, one, two, three, four, five, one to ten, how do you evaluate the service? All of these scales we can call it ordinal. Um, nominal, no order, for example, gender, male, female, female, male, no order. Okay, F favorite color, blue, black, white, red, no order. Okay, that's why. Actually, for the system, if you put one of the two, it won't cause you any trouble, but, um, you know, let's do it like this. So here, exercise, I'm going to just call it X, Excel. So here, number zero, and then I'm going to say, do you do exercise? That's the, the label. That means that's the question uh, I create originally for my uh, population, for my sample. And this is a dichotomy question. I'm just going to put one, and then it's going to be this. And then I hit the plus sign, and then no, it's going to be two. Okay? And then okay. Once I'm done with this, let's imagine that we already... Um, we're going to do this way, nominal, remember, no order. So once we create any kind of matrix that we have, any kind of database, now the process will be, remember, to 
um, tabulate. Once we code, we give codes to every single answer now on tabulate. So imagine that we have 3,000 service. We're going to go to data view and view. I click on view and the value label, okay? Value label. Why? Because I want to see what I'm typing. Okay, make sure, again, that value label is checkmark. Once value, value label is checkmark, we are able to add the values of our survey. So in the case number one, which is the survey number one, my response that answer is male, so it's going to be number two. And then I move with tabs. I put two number two, so it's just two. Okay, so it's going to be male. And then the edge, he, see, he says 26, so it's going to be two. Because remember that two is 26. Oh, I don't remember. Okay, you see, I remember the data set that you create. Actual way, this person say two because this person say 121. So we're going to do this, okay? And then the desired way is going to be three because this person, uh, this person uh, uh, answer 151. Okay, so this is going to be the number three. Exercise, this person say no. So I'm going to put number two. So remember, every single answer becomes a code. Now I'm done with the case number one. Let's go to the case number two. What is the case number two? Another survey. The next survey. I, the next survey, I got the answer. So one is female in this case. And then this person say one, two, three, four. It says for 46 years. So actually, it's this case is four. We keep moving. And then uno, dos, tres, cuatro. making sure that every answer we add is exactly what our respondent say. Here, remember, this is a practice, but we are transcribing exactly what my population say, exactly what they answer, and taking in consideration the survey that we already um, developed. Actually, those are answers from that we obtain it from the student. Okay, so uh, for practice, of course. So this is two. And then this is the case number three. So make sure you put the number of the case when you are tabulating your service in real life. Okay, so then uh, number four, and exactly what my um, community say regarding the answers that they uh, already, um, you know, put in the survey. So imagine that you have more than one, uh, imagine that you have a lot of cases, you in the real life, you will have many cases, no one, no two, no three, maybe 100, maybe 200, maybe 3,000. It's depending the uh, survey that you are developing at that time and the size of our sample, right? So that's what you will do. And then once you are done with this part, Let's say that you already code, tabulate all your service and you are done. I'm in the case number four. I'm done with the case four. Make sure you put your number of cases. Now I'm in the case five. As you can see, this is a short, short, short uh, um, survey. It's a short, short, short survey. In real life, mm, I don't think you will have that service that short because usually we researchers want to have certain things covered in our service, but um, you will have more than four variables in your, actually there are five here. You will have more than five variables in the real life. But this is an example. Once you are done, okay, once you are done, the way I'm doing this for practice, I'm just going to copy and paste, control C, and I will copy and paste a little bit so you have some data once you practice remember that you are adding adding your information now let's run the statistic okay so let's imagine that we already tabulate all of these cases we have a huge amount of data in our database and now we are ready to analyze the data i'm recording let's go to analyze and i will do Analyze, one second, data. It's because what I'm seeing is, uh-huh, graph utilities. Let 
descriptive, sorry. I'm going to go to analyze and then I click on descriptives and then I will go to frequencies. I will put all the variables that I want to analyze. In this case, I will do with everything. My advice for you in real life, do the same when you are developing your service. And I will um, do a statistics. So in this case, I want to know my standard deviation, my variance, minimum and maximum, yes. And we'll do my central tendency in this case. And I think I am done for now. Continue. Let's do the range. And let's do continue. Let's throw, let's put click on charts. Let's do pie charts. It's not gonna let me do everything. I will do my charts with percentage in pie. So I'm gonna click continue. Is this part is up to you? It's up to you actually how you want to see your information, how you want to obtain your data, hit OK. And now I will have an output, which is this. This is my output with my data. You will see how it's distributed. You will see the frequencies, how looks my data, what is the frequency, the results that we obtain it. You will see how it's the, this is the magic of SPSS, see my results gender of my of my population age everything is distributed like this in the real life i don't use this data and uh, this graphic for to present to my stakeholder i uh, transfer everything to excel but it's up to you here with these frequencies you can run your graphics in excel in everywhere else so but you can keep going here okay go to variable and uh, let's uh, put the gender, let's do okay. The, the SPSS will let you to create and you can explore actually your results here and see how to keep going. Now, once I'm done with this part, I run my frequencies. I want that you see the last thing for today is I'm gonna go to my data set again here. And I will run analyze and I will do my uh, one uh, T student test, okay? The T student. Here, when you go to power analysis in the top and then click on means and then one sample T test, one sample T test, you will do one, number one, to run your T test, okay? This is when you uh, put the zero and one. No, it's one. That's the number I have to do here. Input value, greater than zero and less than one. Mm -mm. Usually, this let me do. Okay, let's do it this way. Zero point one. Those are um, uh, values that we will add to the system, and uh, we will choose zero point one. When you see the um, test for me, let me show you here that the student. Yeah, but I didn't choose them. I was running this on the, let me see. Now I'm used to run this in the PSP Pyre. Let's go back.
you know what happened that I am I have been running this um I have been running this test with the BSP Pyre and it's not working the same way when the when the one sample the student give you around less than two that means that the variable does those not have significantly significant value in the changes in, in the mean right once you run this test and you don't have a value that is greater than two that means that is no significantly significative important the result that we have but um, in this case, I wanted to, I, I, what the results that you have looks like is not significantly important in the test for me, but I wanted to, that you see the um, difference between the actual weight and the desired weight of this population that complete this test. That's why. But it's working for me like more, um, it's working for me more easy, to be honest, in the, now I'm used to the, <laughs> to the PSP buyer. Anyway, we will uh, stop the video until here. Uh, we saw how to start with the database, and we saw how to run the descriptive, and we saw also where is the uh, one T student uh, test located. Okay, so in case that I want to see better the results, in my case, I will go to PSP because now I'm more used to the way that PSP Pyre is giving me the results and how to set up the results. And that's why I am more used to explain you using the PSP Pyre than this one for the one t test. But at least you saw how to run your frequencies using the uh, original SPSS. This is just a little view that what the SPSS can do for you in order to um, analyze the statistic results. Another tool that I wanna, I don't wanna leave you without showing is this one, and I'm done. I'm gonna take you to analyze again, and I'm gonna take you to the script tips again. And then when you are in the script statistics, we're going to go to cross tab, cross tab, right? So once you are in cross tab, we can see, uh, we can uh, confront different variables, for example, depending me, my age, how much exercise I do, or et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to go to this one so I can show you. I use another data label, data matrix, but it doesn't matter. So look at this. Now you can see, for example, depending the age of the group, how much people purchase weekly or bi-weekly. This is something I showed you before, but it's another tool that you can explore here using the SPSS. And that's it.